Why, hello there. Welcome. I can't be serious. How you guys doing? Uh, how was yesterday, your first day of the new year at school without me as your teacher? I hope it went well. Um, there were a little bit of complications regarding the assignment in that you didn't see it on the uh, Google Classroom like you normally do. That's my fault. I think I figured out what was wrong with that. It shouldn't happen again, and if it does, um, blame Trent. It's always Trent's fault, okay? So, today, lesson 6-2, dash um, probably going to have a few hiccups like we did yesterday um in that i am going to be presenting my whole screen when i go over the lesson and that's going to make things a little bit complicated i hope it's not too difficult to see um i hope you can understand me um and i think from yesterday's assignment you guys did pretty well today's going to be a little bit more complicated um uh, for my regular and my advanced classes uh so i guess we should get started now nah, let me tell you a story so one day no, we'll get started, okay? So lesson 6-2, uh, the lesson, the topic, and, and again, we've talked about equivalent ratios before. That's all the lesson's about. Um, it's about equivalent ratios. I'm gonna go ahead and present so that you can see uh, what it is you're supposed to see. Let me see if this can work, okay? Um, guys, it's 9.30 p.m. Um, on a Wednesday night. So let me go here. I'm going to present my entire screen because I don't know how else I'm going to make this work. Um, so my whole screen should be being seen right now. And what I want you to see from that is this right here. So this is the notes. Actually, let me do this. So if you go to, uh, you should be able to see everything. So if you go to, uh, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Yeah. So. You go to your agenda today, so it's going to look a little bit different than this, but you will see the 6-2 notes, and they will look just like, oh, I didn't have to present my whole screen. Huh. Because they're here. I didn't need to do that. So let me do this. I'm going to keep recording. I'm going to stop presenting, and then I'm going to go back to the present, and I'm going to present a window, and it's going to be this window. So that should make it a little bit uh, things a little bit bigger for you to see, I'm hoping. So if I can go back to the, yeah, perfect. You should be able to see this. If not, I'm in trouble. So let's talk about equivalent ratios, okay? Now, what are equivalent ratios for today's lesson? Uh, can I write on this? Let's find out. I can, perfect. So you need to know two things. Thing number one, you need to know what, let me, let me stop Harry Potter. Harry, please be quiet. All right, you need to know what equivalent ratios are. You need to know their definition. And then second, how do you get equivalent ratios? The good news is last semester in December, we talked about both of these. Uh, let me see if I can raise, goodbye, goodbye. If I can only do this with the memories of my exes. Now, equivalent ratios defined. So I'm right here in the notes, okay? So equivalent ratios, what are they? They are ratios that have the same value, even if the numbers are different. I have said that many times before. We've discussed this with pizza. So look below. You see this? You see this right here? There's three pizzas, pizza one and two and three. Look at the part that's shaded. Or let's, let's say I ate half the pizza here, pizza one. Pizza two, you ate three out of six slices. Pizza three, you ate four out of eight. Who ate the most? Well, as most of you know, they're all the same amount that have been eaten. That's because they're equivalent ratios. So there are three fractions above, but they're all equivalent. All three ratios represent, represent the same. Oh, that should say amount. That should be the T. It's not a G. I'm a moron, and that's okay. You already knew that. So all three ratios represent the same amount. There's a T right there of pizzas eaten, which was half of a pizza that has been eaten. Now let me get rid of this. So equivalent ratios are ratios that are equivalent. Okay. Sometimes you have ratios and you're like, are these equivalent? Um, like, are these two ratios equivalent? Well, we've also talked about that. You can get from here to here about multiplying times three. If you do two times three, does that give you 10? No, it doesn't. These are not equivalent. You can also use the word proportional. They're not proportional. <gasps> I don't know. You can do that. Cool. So 
for the, the other thing for today is how do you get equivalent ratios? Let me get off of this. Perfect. So how do you get equivalent ratios? Um, so now I'm looking at this part, the second part of your notes. So two ways, multiplication or division. So if you have, this is, if you multiply the top and the bottom number, I know that's really hard to see. So let me make you, let me show you what you got. If you take the top and bottom of a ratio and you multiply both the top and bottom times the same amount, you will always have equivalent ratios. 30 times 2 is 60. What's 40 times 2? It's 80. This ratio is identical. It's equal. It's equivalent to that ratio. And it also works in reverse. If you take a ratio, this, this ratio is written as a fraction, okay? And you divide the top and bottom by the exact same amount, your new ratio will be exactly identical. This is exactly identical to this, okay? Those ratios are identical. Wow, my mouth is already getting sore for talking for so long. It hasn't even been long. It's been like five minutes. Oh, I love you, COVID. Now, um, so for my advanced class, let's, let's look at what you're going to be doing today. You're actually going to have a lot to do today. So what I'll do is I will jump to the IXL first because I know both of my classes are going to be doing those. Oh, I'm getting dizzy. Why? Uh, it's like my whole face is buzzing right now. And I haven't even been drinking because I don't do that unless it's water. So, <clears throat> so your IXL assignment for both of you, the, the, the first few are going to be so easy. You'll be able to do them like probably less than 60 seconds. Uh, let me make this larger for y'all to see it, but let's see. What's the ratio of rectangles to triangles? Well, how many rectangles do I see? I see four. That number is already written. How many triangles do I see? I see one. And so all I got to do is put the number one right here. That's not it. I want to put the, oh my gosh. I want to put the number one right there. Submit. That's it. We're done. What's the ratio of triangles to squares? There's two triangles. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares. They already have eight. I just need to put the first number down. Class, that's how you do that assignment. Now, ratio of triangles, there's one triangle to total shapes. There's two total shapes. Boom, the end. So that's how you do the first assignment, uh, if whatever I give you for IXL. Uh, the other one, write a ratio for word problems. Should be pretty self-explanatory. What's the ratio of number of empty seats to number of occupied? Well, there's 39 empty, 11 occupied. Boom, that's the answer. Pretty basic. For the other one, um, which model represents the ratio? That shouldn't be confusing either. Which model represents the ratio? <laughs> My face is still buzzing. Like it hurts to talk this much. I'm whining. I apologize. I'm reminding myself of certain people in my classes, but I'm not going to name names in a recording. That's for individual classes. <sighs> All right. So which model represents the ratio of seven squares to one triangle? Well, I'm just counting seven squares and one triangle. It's got to be that. So, I gotta, I gotta pause. Hmm. Okay. Um, and then identify equivalent ratios. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do for this one. I do know for my, I don't think I'm gonna give my advanced class days. You're gonna have the math Excel assignment for my regular classes to do this. What you're gonna wanna do, I would suggest writing both ratios that you see as fractions, okay? Write them as fractions just like that. Order is important. 16 on the top, 8 on the bottom, 2 on the top, 1 on the bottom. And then, use since I'm getting I'm going smaller, God, this isn't, you know what, this isn't going to work for you. So here's what you're going to want to do. For some of you, it's going to be too difficult. So you're going to want to cross multiply. See if you get the same thing. Okay? This is what I mean. 16 times 1 is 16. 8 times 2 is 16, or is 16 equal to 16? 
The answer is yes. So those are equivalent. I just cross multiplied and I solved and they are equivalent. Are these equivalent? Well, let me set up a proportion. Remember that? We'll do it again. Set 14 over 18 in my first fraction. Set 1 over 2 in my second. There's my proportion. Now, are they equivalent? Well, if I cross multiply and they are, well, then they, uh, I'm sorry. If I cross multiply and I get the same thing, then they are equivalent. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do 14 times 2. I'm going to do 18 times 1, okay? 14 times 2 is 28. 18 times 1 is 18. Those are not equivalent. So they're not, I'm sorry, those are not equal, so they're not equivalent. So I'm going to click no, and I'm going to do one more. That should be it for today's assignment. You should be able to finish the rest on your own, okay? So how do we determine if these are equivalent? Set up a proportion. Put what you see in the first ratio into the first fraction. Put what you see in the second ratio into the second fraction. And then cross multiply. 15 times 1, 10 times 2. That's going to give you 15. That's going to give you 20. Those are not equivalent. So these are not, I'm sorry, those are not equal. So these are not equivalent. It's the same thing. I'm going to hit no. And for my advanced class, I'm about to go over your assignment with you. But what I just did is how you would solve your assignment as well, okay? So uh, regular classes, you should be able to finish all four IXL assignments before class is over. They're pretty basic. But it is good practice. I want you to be comfortable with ratios, and I think you will be if you're not already, okay? So get to work. When you're done, you can help each other out if you have the substitute's permission and you're not being a distraction. Um, Advanced, let's look at your assignment, okay? I'm going to go to first period classwork. Let's look at Math Excel 6-2. Take me there now. <sighs> Let me not talk for 10 seconds. <sighs> Nobody started. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Abigail, look at your name. Um, so let me do this. I'm going to have to do this all over again, and that sucks. I don't know if this is going to work. I'm still recording, right? Yeah, that should be. My face is still buzzing. It's my cheeks more than anything. Okay, we'll go here. We'll go 6 2. How's your day been? Happy New Year 2022. I uh, found what I'm looking for. This is what I'm giving you. Okay. Should be eight questions. No, they're pretty basic. And a lot of you are going to be confused. Let me make it larger. It's easier to see. Okay. You're going to find three ratios that are equivalent to the given ratio. Here's what I suggest you do. What I suggest you do. Some of you are going to find this really easy. You're just going to be using multiplication, okay? And you can do it in your heads. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So take that ratio, 7 over 8. How do you get from 7 to 14? It's bigger, so use multiplication. 7 times what? 7 times 2. So now, if these are going to be equivalent, you have to multiply this times the same thing. So here's my question. Does 8 times 2 equal 24? Obviously, it doesn't. So they're not equivalent. So this is, excuse me, this is not one of the answers. So let's move on, okay? Let's do the same thing for the next ratio. I get from 7 to 28 by multiplying times 4. If I take the bottom number times 4, am I going to get 32? The answer is yes. That is one of my answers. So right now, no. Yes, see, for me, 28 over, that might be a different letter for you, but 28 over 32 is going to be one of the answers. Now, let's look and see if E is one of the answers. Do the same thing. 7 times 4 is 28. 8 times 4 is not 24. 
So that's not one of the answers for me. So no, no, yes. Now I'm going to see if I can do it just talking and see if it makes sense. 7 times 2 is going to be 14. Take 8 times the same number, 8 times 2. Do I get 16? I do. So that's an answer. I just want to know if these are equivalent. 7 over 8. So let me get rid of that. Let me do it again the same way. Okay, let me get rid of this. Man, this is going to confuse some of you, but I know a lot of you are already smelling what I'm stepping in. Um, so how do I get, so with equivalent ratios, remember the notes. If you multiply both numbers by the same thing, they stay equivalent. So what do you multiply 7 by to get 21? 3. So if I do 8 times 3, what does that give me? 24, right? Is that a 24? It's not. That's not the answer. That's not the answer. 7 times 3 is 21. 8 times 3 is 24. That's the final answer. So for me, the answers are going to be C, F, and G. Woo! So I'm going to clear. Uh, I'm going to hit C. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to hit C. I'm not. Heath, you're dumb. C, F, and G. I'm going to do one more, and that's it. That's all I can do for now. It just hurts too much to talk this much. Wait, what? Oh, I didn't hit check answer, sorry. Okay, next, last one. Okay, so it's the same concept, okay? So I'm gonna take nine over four, and I'm just, nine times what is 36? Nine times four. Now do four times the same, do the bottom number the same way. So let me, let me visualize it a little bit better for you, okay? Since nine times four, gives me 36. I'm going to multiply the bottom number times the same thing. That gives me 16. Is that bottom number 16? It's not. So that's not one of the answers. Now let me switch colors. Let's do this again, okay? Um, 9 times 3 is 27. 4 times 3 is 12. That's not a 12. That's not one of the answers. 9 times 2 is 18. 4 times 2 is 8. That's not one of the answers. You see what I'm doing? What I'm doing is I'm taking the fraction they start us with, and then I'm taking the next fraction, and I'm saying, okay, through multiplication, can I get there? 9 times 2 is 18. Multiply the bottom times the same thing. Does 4 times 2 equal 12? Definitely not. So that's not equivalent. So on the right side, there's going to be 3 that are correct. And let me tell you what they are real quick. You watching? This is 9 times 3. This is not. It's got to be this one. 9 times 2, 4 times 2. It's got to be this one. 9 times 4, 4 times 4. So I know that was a little bit fast, but slow it down. Watch me do that again to see if it makes sense. And if not, look at your notes. And it should. And I'm sorry, but that's, that's it for the day. That's all I can do for now. Uh, we'll be here again tomorrow. Email me if you have any questions, okay? Hope that helps.